coming here this evening to do the presentations. And then moving on after this evening, it would then go to town meeting. So we this this has been uh, certainly a lengthy process, but a process that has involved a lot of uh, community and, and uh, staff input. Excuse me, one sec, John. Chris, excuse me. Do you need to call to order? Or yeah, sure. Ready? Call the school committee to order. Thank you. Sure. I didn't want to interrupt. You know, once Dr. already gets going. <laughs> 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 so when we develop the budget. <laughs> um, we want to tie it into the goals of the district. So uh, you've, you've seen this slide before about our vision. And really, uh, you know, our vision is to inspire the innovative leaders tomorrow, to engage them and still a joy of learning. To, do, to get to that point, um, we focused on five goals this year as a district. And some of these goals we have been focusing on and will continue to focus on for the next few years. The first goal, which is probably the most important goal, is the student learning goal. Um, the second goal, um, and that, that student learning goal focuses uh, really on all of the curriculum and structural changes that are happening in our district this, right now, the new frameworks, the new assessment, um, instructional practices that are going on. Um, the professional practice goal is to build the capacity of our staff um, so that they can deliver that curriculum in a meaningful way. Um, the third goal is to focus on students. The, support wellness and well-being and safety of our students. And then fourth and fifth goals, uh, one, the fourth goal dealing with resources and space. Um, we are starting to address those, those space needs, but also taking a look at some of the other program needs as we move forward with our, with our schools. Um, and how can we continue to improve as a school district? And then finally, communication, uh, which is a, a major goal that we have been working on, is how do we proactively communicate what is going on in our schools to our community. Um, there are a lot of excellent things going on in our schools and we want to make sure that the community is aware of them. These are the five goals up above. Below are the different initiatives underneath those five goals and you can see several of them uh, are focusing on things that we have worked on uh, in the past but um, are all moving forward. So I want us to start first by talking a little bit about uh, per pupil spending and um, the Chapter 70 funding formula. And I've made some comments in the past about these two areas um, that are, we have some further information that we want to we want to share with you. So these communities that you see here are the comparable communities that are in our budget book um, that Reading has compared themselves to uh, from an economic standpoint um, over the last few years. I think um, you can see two things. One is the, the per pupil spending in 2008 in each of the communities, which is in the darker green. And then the lighter green is um, the per pupil spending uh, in 2013, which is the last uh, number we have, the, the end of the year report, uh, which all communities have to submit. It's the last year that we have the end of the year report for all of the communities. Um, in the region. Yeah, I, I'll just piggyback on that for a second. Our FY14 end of year report has been submitted. We're in the process, all districts are in the process of being audited and they'll be certified. So probably sometime in June or July, FY14 data will be available, but it's not audited yet. So that's why we're using FY13. So you can see here the growing, you, you can see the differences um, between what was spent in per pupil in 2000, uh, FY2008, uh, school year 2008, and school year 2013 between its, the, dis, the school districts. And the, the gap between F, the 2008 and 2013 for Reading is a little bit smaller than some of the other districts that you see here. Um, you know, it, 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 and I think it has contributed to the ranking or the decline in ranking that we have seen over the last several years uh, in the per pupil expenditure for, for um, the different communities where Reading is more towards the bottom, bottom uh, part of the of the state. John, does this? Do you just take kind of the, the forty-two million dollar budget and divide it by number of pupils? Is that, is that straightforward? Or is it, it, it's not that straightforward because it, it it takes into account revolving fund support um, for um, uh, instructional purposes. It takes into account grant funding that we have for different things. So it, it it's truly this is an all-in what each district spent um, per pupil. 
It's May also ask, is there any way for yes. a school um, department to, it sounds good when they're being audited, that says to me everybody should have the same buckets and the same numbers mm -hmm. in their buckets, but for instance we just spent a um, million dollars on our school system on more class space. Is that going to be part that of will, this number? That will be reflected in it. Yes, it does include that. So that will and, be reflected and, in it in, okay. in FY60, FY15, FY16, depending upon when the capital expenditure. So I guess the question is, is this a good measure of what you feel we're spending per pupil? Or is there is there any fudge factors that maybe we're not taking into account that other communities might be counting that we're not, a, not no. counting? This Everyone is counting everything. So okay. this is, I think we're okay. some... Um, some feedback or some questions that we've had is, is in the area of transportation. You know, is, is transportation different in one district versus another? And, and um, in the budget book, and I think it's in the questions, I did tease out transportation so you could look at um, expenses um, net of transportation to see that it, it didn't really change anything. Um, the other yeah, it's about a $200 difference. Yeah, it, it wasn't a huge difference. The other thing that um, drives our, our per pupil and our, our expenditures is our out of district placements and, and but again in the budget book we show that we're we're kind of in line with the twenty percent in terms of um, IEPs and our spending yeah. um, our total percentage spending of special education compared to our total budget is kind of in line with our comparable communities so I don't think anything is really skewing the data here okay. what I wanted to show with this was just the, the change from 2008 to, to 13 and just the, the increase, and I think there's another chart, the next one, kind of shows the volatility because those were some lean years, some lean budget years, where some people didn't increase their per pupil expenditure. Um, Hingham, for instance, if you toggle back and forth, you can see Hingham, um, their per pupil expenditures actually declined over this period of time where they must be going through a readjustment with what they're doing. They're still above um, where we're at, but um, you know, they must be facing constraints within their town. So, just these are DESE numbers. We're not calculating this. Correct. This, no, this information is from the DESE. This is all DESE. Right. Yeah. DESE data. Right. You, you yeah. mentioned the grants. Is it gross spending or net spending? Uh, everything is gross spending. It, so, it's, if you get a grant, it's the spending is included, but it's not reduced by the fact that you get. The spending is reduced by the fact that you got a grant. No. Okay. The, the other thing that, that this graph shows, um, and you can see it's the 08, 09, 9, 10, all the way to 11, 12, 13, is that the, the percent change has, has declined. I mean, this, is, this was the lean year for a lot of school districts, was the 9, 10 to 10, 11 school year. But you can see it's, it's, it's pretty much dipped every, every single year. And, and I want to I wanna emphasize the point is that we are extremely appreciative of the funding that we receive from our community. We understand that a significant amount of every tax, every taxpayer's bill goes to education. That's not the point we're trying to make here. The point we're trying to make here is that we, you know, we have a revenue problem in the community. We also have a Chapter 70 funding formula that is not adequate, and I'm going to get into that in a little bit in a, in a minute. Um, and this, this chart shows you again the difference. This is probably a little bit easier to see from a number standpoint from the previous ones, which are bar graphs. But again, the change with the comparable communities, you can see other than Hingham, which seems to be an, an anomaly, totally, yeah. um, all the other increases from 08 to 13 are double digit, whereas Reading had an 8.4% increase in per pupil spending. And Winchester built a new school in there, right? I think. I have a pretty big school. Uh, I believe they're, they build a high school. Yeah. Or rather, so, high school. All right. So, I mean, so, so you know, we got our schools done already, so they're already in so, there. So, you know, back to your question about will that $1.2 million that we just approved for capital for a building, I don't know that that will be reflected. So, I, 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 don't, I, don't, I don't think I don't, that it will be. So, yeah, I will please. research that and let you know. So, it's, it's I don't, capital. Because it's capital. Yeah. It's not, um, this is what we spend for instructional purposes yeah. for. Um, just is more of that than, yeah. than I think that. that would certainly make residents and parents feel better because that's a very scary number of us being in the quartile. I don't know if I can speak for anyone else there. What would make it scarier? I'm confused. The fact that we're in the low point. Oh, okay. I thought it has nothing to do with the capital, though. No, we ask the question if the capital is going in there. Right, right. Just the number. Any consolation 100 years ago we were to 
<laughs> so the it's not a lot of concept. I think the, the other the other piece that's important to this equation is the chapter seventy eight. Um, the last couple of years in FY fourteen to fifteen and FY fifteen to sixteen, and the governor's house one numbers just came out. And a lot of times those house one numbers for state aid at least don't don't change dramatically to what the final numbers are going to be. But um, you could see that Reading is not receiving a significant amount of Chapter 70 aid anymore as much as we were receiving in previous years. The reason for that, and I think Martha could probably go into more detail, is that Reading's affordability, reading, uh, affordability rating as a community is higher than other communities. We have actually hit the, the level. So all we now get is anything that is above and beyond what the legislature wants to approve as a whole harmless amount. So last year we received $25 per student, this year we're receiving $20 a student, uh, assuming that the budget holds the way it is. So, and, and this was also reflected when we were having the conversations a couple years ago about full day kindergarten and that we were going to receive funding on full day kindergarten, um, but now that we have really hit the, the level of funding, uh, or the affordability rating in the Chapter 70 funding formula, we will not, we would not be able to reach that number. Um, and again, it's, it's information to show that there are other communities that are, you know, um, getting this aid. There are other communities that are, have a higher per pupil spending. And just to be clear, the affordability is actually in the other direction. In other words, our, our median values and incomes went yeah, up our, so our, high. Yeah, our per right. capita income uh, rose at a higher percentage than the average, the state average, and our median house, our median household um, property value, the, um, excuse me, the equated, oh gosh, I can't think of it now, the EQV or whatever it is, yeah. the equated so property value. Yes. Yeah. Is the reason that we're plateau. I'm sorry. We're less affordable, and that's why we're plateau. Correct. Your your property value increases yeah, at a higher increasing. rate than the state. Yeah, right. Yes. Yes. Right. Not a, yes, you can. Yes, good you thing can. in a lot of ways. Right. It's not yes. Right. <laughs> And the, the last hearing for the Chapter 70 Commission was uh, yesterday. And so now they will put together a report. They've heard a lot of feedback on what's wrong with the funding formula and what the needs are. They've gone to communities all over the, uh, the Commonwealth, uh, the western part of the state, uh, north, central, south. Um, they now have to submit a report by June to um, the legislature. Um, my guess is nothing will be done in this upcoming budget because it will be too late. Um, but there will probably be something for FY17. I do caution you, though, that if the pie stays the same size, uh, we probably will receive less Chapter 78. Um, because we probably will not, uh, we will not benefit from a, 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 a changed formula unless they increase the size of the unless pie. the funding, yeah. So um, I think that's an important point to, to make. Um, this is something that I was saying earlier that we, we do realize that, you know, I, and this is FY14, but 53% of every tax, average tax bill of a median property value um, goes to uh, education, and we certainly appreciate that support in our, in our community. Jim, do you know that the 53%, uh, I feel like we've asked this question before, and, and you gave it just, do we know how that compares to those other? Categories, the, the other towns that were in the same mix there? Um, I do not, not yeah. without a lot of research. Because okay. are we, I, I, it would be a lot of research. It's yep. certainly doable. I know that we, you know, we tease out accommodated costs, so yeah, that 53% doesn't include answer, accommodated costs. You know, it's helpful to figure out where insurance is. It's helpful to figure out, yeah. Yeah. Where, yeah. Where, yeah. Where, the, where the breakdown is, right? Because you get, yeah. we're putting 53% in, yet yeah, we're still coming out so low mm -hmm. on the, the per pupil spending side. It's a, yeah. It becomes a, a math problem at some point. Right? So, um, when we had the financial forum in October, I, the uh, I think the the common understanding is was to come in with a a budget that at the time I believe was a two and a half percent, which that that's changed a little bit favor in the fav in favorably uh, to a 2.8 percent now. Uh, base budget. Uh, we did go through the exercise um, because we had to have a starting point of what were the things that we needed to reduce. Um, we went through the exercise of what are, if we took everything that we were doing this year 
and moved it to next year with inflationary costs and other other increases, what would it be for an increase? And it would be a 4.7% budget. And you can see that the difference um, is a 727,000 difference. So when we began the process of developing a budget, um, we started with the notion of you know making reductions from that uh, level service budget um, to get to this number of uh, the 2.7% increase budget. Um, you know, I also, and I, and I think the Finance Committee knows this, but uh, just for, for people that may be newer to the Finance Committee, is we have always done a, a very good job um, working with the town, managing the funds, and, and really getting the best bang for our buck. Um, and you can see every year we are, we are always um, either, we're always returning something back at the end of the year. Last year we had some costs that, that never came to fruition in special education. So those were re returned back at the end. But we always manage our funding very well. Our audits were always solid. Um, we just have gone through audit reports in, other, in some of our areas, and they're always solid areas. So um, you know, the, the money for years um, has been managed very well um, with, with the school department budget. So now moving on to the actual budget, the big drivers of the budget, um, the, always the, the first one is going to be your salaries. Um, we are next year in the second year of a collective bargaining agreement with all of our uh, unions. Um, so it's those increases that will be moving forward in the budget and then uh, any non-union salary and benefit increases as well. Uh, it should be noted as, um, as we said in the past that uh, non-union personnel are not, uh, do not have any steps. Um, they do not have any columns that their, their increases are straight uh, cost of living adjustments. Uh, whereas in some collective bargaining units it is also have step and um, columns. Um, we also have some anticipated increases in special ed transportation and uh, some out of district tuition increases. We also had next year a decrease in circuit breaker reimbursement, um, which is uh, what is used to help offset uh, costs of, of a student that may cost more than, I believe, 38,000? I think it was 40,000 40, uh, a year. Um, and most of those are out-of-district students. Um, so the reason why we have such a decrease is that um, we had a decrease in students that were in out-of-district placements when the circuit breaker was calculated for this time period. So that compiled with some increases does have a, you know, does result in an uh, increase in this area. Um, we also anticip we're anticipating some natural gas costs. Um, we are in, um, we are going to be in, in the process of negotiating a new contract for natural gas. Uh, breaking it down um, into some of the different areas um, and going a little bit more detail. So the first piece, the biggest part of our budget, salary and compensation. Um, the majority of our budget is personnel. So the, this is not a surprise that this is the bulk of the, of the, the funding. Um, this includes, again, all the step increases and cost of living adjustments and non-represented salary increases. There's some other things in here that did not increase the budget that I, I want to um, emphasize um, that we restructured uh, existing positions or existing non-personnel funds um, to create positions that we felt were needed to continue to improve our schools. Um, grade one teacher at Joshua Eaton, we've talked about before, uh, was needed. Uh, the class sizes right now in this year's kindergarten are 24-25. Um, uh, so we are adding a teacher next year, grade one, which is one of the reasons why the modular classrooms were needed as well. Um, we eliminated the parents staff. Right. Well, they're all restructured positions, yeah. right? Um, the, the literacy coach and mathematics coach is needed to continue to have us improve in the frameworks implementation. Uh, the board's certified behavior analyst is to help with our um, social emotional programs um, that we have in the district. The technician is to continue to help support our growing use of mobile devices in our school district. And then the program director for our SSP and TSP programs are for probably our most fragile population of students K-12. to um, We also have some reductions in this uh, area. Uh, we are reducing our substitute teacher line item and our regular education paraeducators line item. So there will be some adjustments made in those areas. Can you remind me SSP and TSP? I'm sorry. Um, student Support Program and Therapeutic Support Program. Okay. 
Can I make a mistake here? Oh, we'll go back to that okay. one. Um, the contracted services, um, these are any services that we uh, work with a, a vendor and contract out for different, different uh, reasons, different services. Um, this is a decrease in the budget of 211000 um, the main areas of decrease are our special education legal services. Um, we are taking some special education consultation services and we're restructuring it to that position that you saw in the previous uh, slide. Um, we are eliminating all non-mandatory busing in this budget um, unless it can be supported by user fees. Um, and we'll talk more a little bit about that later. And then we are also limiting uh, grant writing services to get to that, that decrease. Material supplies and equipment, this really, the bulk of this is our, um, the budgets that our principals have to run the day-to-day -day operations of their schools, the materials and supplies. Um, it also is district-wide curriculum materials and other uh, equipment that we have. Um, we are decreasing this area by, um, you can see about 116,000. Um, really the biggest area of decrease here is the building per pupil budgets. Um, each building is taking a decrease um, in, in the uh, amount that they're going to be able to spend next year in their, in their uh, schools. So this, this is a significant, um, going to have a significant impact over time if we have to continue this uh, practice. John, quick question. On the, um, the page nine in the, the budget, it kind of goes through the reduction by category? Yes, I'm actually going to get to that chart. You'll see that chart okay. later on. Thank you. Did that number, the 116 number, just... It doesn't tie dollar for dollar. No, it's not going to be dollar for dollar. Of that 116, 76,000. This is the major... Thank you. This is the major category of that decrease. We didn't list them all. Thank you, Joe. When you say that number over time, we'll have to see... So that's a, that's a good question. So the way that we do our purchasing yep. in our school district, um, we hold, um, as, an, as a financial accounting move, um, at the beginning of each year, we hold 30% of all of the budgets... Um, in case there's any unforeseen circumstances. Around April 1st, uh, assuming that we don't have any more snow, um, we will release that back to the, the building so that they can spend that money. What they spend it on is next year's supplies. Okay. So we keep that cycle so that we're kind of on a 16-month purchasing cycle. So if we have to continue this practice for another year, then we'll see the hit in the FY17 budget. Um, the other expenses is really anything else that fits in, that doesn't fit into any of the other categories. Um, you can see we're, we're taking a, a, there's a decrease here of about $77,000. Um, this is being, uh, the, a, a big decrease here is professional development funding, which we are restructuring to, to fund the two instructional coaches that you saw in a previous uh, line item uh, budget area. And then we are uh, adding $50,000 for replacement technology hardware um, in this area. Special education, tuition, and transportation. Another big area. This is, again, an increase. Um, the increases are the out-of-district tuition costs, the reduction to the circuit breakers I mentioned earlier, and then an increase in transportation. And then energy and utilities is an increase of about 47000 we are seeing a decrease in consumption, which is a good thing, but we do anticipate some increase in natural gas. One thing that isn't in here at this point, uh, just to make the uh, the uh, finance committee aware, is we are not we have not accounted yet for an increase uh, in what the modulus will cost for utilities because at the time when we were doing this budget, we did not know mm -hmm. that we were going to have modulus. So. We also didn't know we were going to have the bitter cold winter, so right. I don't know that our natural gas consumption is, yeah. is we can sort of sure. at this point. So you think this is a temporary decrease, or do some measures? That I, when we do our budgeting, we do it based on a five-year average, and so the five-year average was a little bit below, so, um, um, so that's... And then grant revenue assets, and this is an area that we had to uh, hit a little bit harder than we wanted to to make up for the deficit that you saw at the beginning. Um, so, do you see an increase here, and some of that is due to the offset in fees for extracurricular and athletics, which is being proposed in this budget. Um, there are increase in revenue offsets uh, in several of our revolving accounts. Um, 
Some of it we're, we're looking at is one time, for example, the circuit breaker, because of the circuit breaker reduction, this year we increased our out of district tuition, our in district tuition account uh, revolving uh, offset mm -hmm. um, because we anticipate that our circuit breaker will go back up a year from now. Um, so we, we the, the, the increases that we made, we feel we, we're not, uh, we, we, we're not uncomfortable with, but we don't want to go down this road too much longer. That the budget that we have put together this year, which does include using heavier amounts of offsets and fee increases, is a one-year solution um, to, a, to a longer problem, which I think you've probably heard from other presentations. <laughs> Sustainability. <laughs> right. Um, but our, our main goal this year was not to cut the classroom. It, that was very important to us. That was our goal, and we, we were able to accomplish that. Um, by cost center, um, you can see this is where the um, gets us to the, the 2.8%. Uh, it, it works out to be 2.8. It's because the accommodated costs, when, um, when Mr. Lellisher does it, it's, he pulls the accommodated costs out. So once you add them back in, it actually is a 2.8 increase versus the 2.7 within the 2.7 guidance. It's just mathematically mm -hmm. in total. The um, administration, there's a decrease. <laughs> um, and this is due to some salary adjustments. Um, regular day is, is a, there's a slight increase. Um, special ed, you can see. So you can see that you know most of the increases are, are comparable increases um, across the board. By cost center, and, and this really hasn't changed over the years. Um, the the majority of our budget is regular day, which is where it should be. That's the classroom. Um, that's your instructional services. Um, our second one is special education, which is also directly related to the to the classroom and the services that we provide for students on uh, individualized education plans. Um, we are proud of the fact that our administration budget is one of the lowest in the areas. Um, you know, we, we try real hard to to maintain that 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 smaller number with cost center, um, so that more more can go into the um, into the classroom. So I think these are the charts that you're yes, referring you. to. Uh, so here's a summary of, of the reductions um, to get us to the to the seven hundred thousand plus. Uh, number that we were referring to earlier. Uh, I already talked about the grant writing, the regular day transportation, um, the substitute teachers wrapped up the per pupil budget, um, the virtual high school program. Um, we're not eliminating virtual high school. That's an online courses that students can take. We're just changing the model that we're using. This is primarily stipends that we pay out. So when we're going away from the model where we have a certain amount of slots available, we're going to go on a uh, student by student basis now where they we will pay for when a, a single student takes a course. Um, the EMAC restructuring, um, we still found some duplication in services with our EMAC services and we feel this is an area that we can um, we can do some savings in. And what's EMAC? Um, Eastern Middlesex. It, it's provides, it provides um, post high school support for students that um, are on individualized education plans. We have to, um, according to the law, you have to provide uh, support services for students up to age 22. So that's, that's what this is. Um, increasing the METCO offset. Um, the, one of the good pieces of news that came out of the governor's budget is that the uh, METCO funding next year is at least level funded, whereas in the 9C cuts, it was being cut by over a million dollars. So, so we're still comfortable with increasing that offset by 25,000. Um, increasing the extended day offset to help offset some of our utility costs uh, uh, through our extended day programs. Um, as you see there, the athletic and extracurricular user fees um, will bring in the $60,000. Um, the special education tuition rise accounts, that's to really offset some of the circuit breaker decrease that we mentioned earlier. And then the reduction in regular education para educators. Obviously this is a cut that we do not want to make um, because it is a personnel cut and they provide support uh, to, our, to our schools. But that is the one personnel cut uh, that we, we needed to make. How will, um, how will you manage without the, sub the additional substitute? Teachers. 
I the will be co covering. When, uh, a big, uh, sure, no. <laughs> well, we'll have teachers we'll in the class. We'll definitely have substitute teachers. <laughs> we'll start with that. <laughs> um, a, a lot of our substitute teacher budget right now um, funds for professional development. And with the change in professional development next year. With the coaches. With the coaches. We think that we'll be able to save some some money here. We also think that it might have been a little bit overfunded in this year's budget because we were we did change our pay scale from um, 75 and 65 to 95 and 65 or 95 and 75 for certified and non-certified teacher subs. So we we do this will be it's aggressive, but it, we should it, with management we should be able to do it. Great. You mentioned that um, about 10% of the substitutes weren't filled, I think it was 9.7% weren't filled. Right, but that's not because we couldn't uh, fund it, it's because of the fill rate. Is that normal or is that um, other districts? Or? Well, what we have found over the years, it's, it's interesting, when the economy seems to improve, we tend to, our pool of substitute teachers tends to decrease mm -hmm. and vice versa. Um, okay. So the economy seems to be improving a little bit because we seem to have a decrease in our yeah. pool, and I think that's what's contributing. To it's that. other. It's also important to note that the classroom didn't go without a teacher. They would right. reassign a para that day, right. and, and a lot of our paras are certified teachers. Um, so they'll, they'll, the principals will get creative with how they, they staff that. The grant writing reduction is that a total elimination or? Yes, it is. Yes. A, and a, the. This would have been able to pay for um, a funding of a major grant. This is about what it would cost to write a major federal grant. Um, like the two grants that we received last year, that was not written by a grant writer, it was written by our own staff. Mm -hmm. So we do feel that, you know, this is, I mean, we, we write smaller grants all the time. Mm -hmm. um, so we've not utilized this uh, service. The in, yeah. Oh, so that's an external service. So. Yeah. Yes, it's hopefully, an external yeah. service. Hopefully we can bring it back in in the future and you don't lose any momentum. Correct. Right. Lose. Okay. But right now we also have two major grants yeah. that we're using okay. that you know, we, we, have we wouldn't have the capacity to go for another major grant right now just okay, because so of all the initiatives that that grant is, or grants are funded. There would be no, like you don't think there's any opportunity cost to not having the service? Not at this not point, possible. no. All right. No, because a lot of our grants right now are entitlement grants based on our demographics and our enrollment, and, and those we get every year without needing a grant writer. Okay. It's, the, it's the major ones that Dr. Doherty just mentioned that we wrote, those were written by internal resources anyways. We didn't contract out for it. But they don't help, have an identification of the grants. You, do they, do they the 8,500 would not, I mean, you would, and we do have access to a grant writer in the same collaborative. Okay. Um, that does make us aware of grant opportunities on a regular basis. Yeah. So we do get that information now. Okay. We don't need a grant. Uh, and you won't lose that? No. Okay. We will not so lose we'll, that. you'll always know about your opportunities. That's okay. This is the restructuring of the positions that I was referring to earlier. Um, so this is taking a look at existing resources in our budget, restructuring them to make the more effective for where we want, what we want to do. Um, so I mentioned, I think I talked about all of these already. Um, so you have the addition on the left and the restructured area on, on the right. We are getting some savings uh, because of the grant that we're able um, to, do some, to do some restructuring to create um, some positions. This is something I believe is also in the, the budget book. So you know, one of, the, one of the things that I know we were asked to do last year, um, and interesting enough, some of the things that are on this list were on this list last year. So, <laughs> so we're able to restructure some things um, and made this list small. <laughs> um, but you can see these are, these are some of the needs that, that we have currently um, in our school district that are unfunded, um, ranging from uh, more so social emotional support at our elementary levels to more what we call tier two academic support across the board for those students that may not be receiving special ed services or are not receiving special ed services but are struggling and it's a it's short-term support and we don't have that mid-level tutoring support across the board we do have some at the elementary level but we don't have it widespread um, so you know those are the types of things that um, you know if you want to put together as I know you were looking for those type of things 
But we also have another slide that I think is also important, in that um, we, we're at a point with our school district that we have stayed pretty much just afloat at the water level for the last three years because of you know, budgetary constraints. We're going to need to take a hard look at where, we, where, we, where our schools are and what we need to do to prepare our students for their futures. Um, so to that end, we're going to start putting together groups by level of what we feel the needs are long term for our different elementary, middle, and high school. Um, you know, for example, and I'll, I'll use this as a concrete example. This past weekend, I was at the robotics tournament all weekend here at the field house. Amazing opportunity. Um, I don't know if anyone had a chance to watch it. But um, we have a high school team that, um, and, and it's not just for the six weeks they're building the robot, but it's for almost an entire school year where they are, they are writing business plans, they are connecting with the community, they are raising funds. They are building a robot too that, is, uh, that has to have certain parameters and um, has to accomplish certain tasks. And then they compete against other communities that have robotics teams as well. Um, that doesn't start at the high school level. That starts at our middle school level and that starts at our elementary level as well. And we have right now robotics teams at our elementary middle school level, but none of it is connected to our actual school district. It's, it's run by volunteers, it's run by parents. But those opportunities exist in classrooms in other school districts. They have robotics classes. They have computer science classes at the elementary and middle school level. They have health education at key points in, in students' developmental lives, um, civics and global education. Those are things we do not have in our school district that we need to have to prepare our students. We also are going to have, very shortly, the state is probably going to approve the new science curriculum frameworks this fall. Um, we're going to need a significant overhaul of our curriculum for science. Um, we have been waiting patiently over time for the new frameworks to be developed and approved. It's finally here. Um, and this is going to, we're going to need a significant amount of resources in the way we change the way we teach science. Um, and also our high school, the current schedule, the current graduation requirements, the current programming is not adequate for the needs of our current and future high school students. So we're going to need to take a look at that as well. You cannot do that with a budget where every year you're just, you're just trying to figure out ways to either restructure things or have you know, an increase of 2.8%. Um, so this is something that is, is coming down the road. It's not a wish list. It's a list that if this is, if this is the type of education we want in Reading, these are the types of things we have to put into that um, for it to happen. So, um, and I know you have also heard this before, but um, if we have similar limitations in FY17 as we do in FY16, we will have to have staffing reductions. Um, we have basically done every restructuring method and, uh, that we have been able to do this year. We can't replicate that next year. Um, so, you know, conservatively, we're looking we're looking at a number that is greater than what we had to cut this year. Based um, on us having another 1.7 million. Yeah, I'm using the same the same increases that we're talking about. This year. Yeah. So that's basically a million or a million one of that 1.7 going to the schools, and then after that, there's a 900,000 short. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's conservative. Right. And then that's using our you know what we anticipate will be increases for you know contractual increases and. Utilities and all that. Um, so, I, do you want me to stop here? And I have a question. Okay. Before that. Yeah, maybe we we'll go through questions from everybody. One question. Uh, last week, uh, the chief, police chief, came in and they presented their wish list. Yes. One of the items on the wish list was a second school resource officer. Yes. Um, I think one of the things that, that we would ask you guys to do, not necessarily for two weeks, but certainly well before town meeting is to kind of plug that into your matrix of wants and needs. Um, and if it comes up in front of town meeting as a discussion, to kind of have an idea as to where that would fit. So in other words, specifically, if, if someone said, hey, let's get another school resource officer, let's fund it, um, would your response be, 
great, yes, that's the number one need we absolutely want it, or would it be, well, in the scheme of things, maybe that's not the first need. And the reason I bring it up is because I don't know that it'll come up, but it's on the Chief's list. We discussed it at the last meeting. Um, I think it would be wise to have some thought given to it first. It was, it was actually a question that was asked. Oh, us. Okay. I'm just afraid that quite the way you did. But, but, um, Mark, that isn't something that has been brought to the school committee's attention. So we haven't had discussions around that. Yeah, that's the reason I'm bringing it up now. Okay. Is because okay. if it were to come up at town meeting sure. and people expected an answer to it, I'm, I'm, oh, I guess we, I'm bringing it up because we, we heard it from the We would certainly love to talk to the chief about that and see where that fits in with priorities. Exactly. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. But that's, he's asking that for an hit, his budget, or is that right. fall into his budget? No, it would be his budget. budget. Okay. Mm -hmm. like, that's all that is. But you remember, we, we, we knew the world as, as the town. <laughs> he was looking for $75,000 for an additional position. Cool. That would be a fantastic conversation. I, I just, just wanted to put it on the table for you guys. I didn't know if that had been discussed back and forth or not. No, I, I, I hadn't. So it, it, that's the, I up. When I saw the question, is really when, and really what I talked about in the question was the value that our current school resource uh, resource officer has um, in our schools. Um, so, awesome. any other questions on this side of the budget? Yeah, I know. I know a lot of the drive is you know savings and where can we go, but I got to go at least push for a second the other direction and looking at the, the school adjustment uh, I'm sure the school adjustment counselors, right? I know it's on the list for uh, I, I know the word is a wish list. I know those are realistic yep. demands. So, you know, two more resources there. I flipped through you know, the material and it talks about the, you know, the, the suicide rate or the contemplation of suicide rate. Anytime you're having those conversations and the numbers are in the mid-teens, and I know obviously you guys have worked, and, and don't take this the wrong way, I know you've got to the right point, but can we afford to, you know, it's great, we can achieve it, all those other areas, and if we're having one issue in that area is unacceptable, I think everyone, you know, would agree. So are we, are we collectively comfortable that that stays on the unfunded wish list? Can we just talk about it a little bit more? Um, you know, do we feel adequate with what we have already and this truly would be additional support or? Can you go back to that slide, John? Yeah. Um, so, and you talk about the, the top one. Yeah. yeah. So, um, and maybe I'm linking it incorrectly no, to, no, you, no. so it might be. The, um, we've, this, and this is our third goal that we've been focused on. So this is tied in actually to the grant, the big grant. The, uh, the multi-tiered system of supports, and it's, it's developing structures and supports and interventions for students for both academic and uh, social, emotional, and behavioral reasons. Um, so right now, we're putting structures in. Um, the intervention piece, which is the discussion next, yep. um, we, we've not had yet. Um, and, you know, as I said before, those tier two areas is where, both for academic and for social emotional, is where we don't have a lot of supports. But this year we brought in, for example, a group of interns that are being supervised, that are providing some support. Um, we have a district-wide school psychologist at the elementary level that does the majority of the testing so that our building-based school psychologists can do more of the social emotional work. Um, is it adequate? It, it, it keeps us going. Yeah. It would be great if we could have more of that support. But when you're trying to, you're right. I mean, when you're yeah. trying to weigh all things, you're right. There's, yeah. but we are we are doing things in this area um, to address it. Yeah. Um, okay. So this I, would be I additional can, and not the start of. If I can weigh in on it too, um, my experience as a consultant in several school districts around our area and also out of state. Most school districts do. Um, school district that I worked in most recently has, uh, every school has a, so, a social worker or adjustment counselor. Um, it's not uncommon. We don't, we don't have that. We have a school psychologist, but um, doesn't perform the same services. And then also, most of the schools that I'm familiar with also have a comprehensive health education curriculum. It's evidence-based. We don't really have what I would call I don't think any of us on the committee would call a comprehensive health education curriculum. It's being taught 
at the high school level in the classroom with certified health educators, but at the middle school and elementary school, it's taught by physical educators and it's generally taught on the gym floor. So it's not the ideal scenario. We are doing something, but not what other what we what I've seen in other districts. And that all ties into what we were talking about suicide ideation. We talk about intervention, but I've always looked at it as prevention is a key consideration. And we really don't, I don't think personally, based on what I've seen, we do enough. So Paul, your question is excellent, and thank you, Mr. Nye. And thank you. Your questions have been excellent through this entire process, so thank you very much. And thank you to all of the FinCon. You guys have been great to work with this year, especially. Um, that 2.7% was a tough number. Oh, yeah. That's, I, where, I, I, that's I where the school yeah, committee I, was focused. There, you saw increases in user fees. We increased everything we could mm -hmm. uh, to, to even consider adding additional headcount, especially given where we're looking at next year. We, did, we just couldn't go there this year. Yeah. So, yeah, we'd love to, and yeah, we know that we could make some improvements, but uh, the budget is just way too tight at this point. And we actually haven't discussed priorities, so uh, I'm not sure that, you know, if we got another 130000 that would be... Okay. I'm not sure why that was not that, well, well, that's, that well, number, that's part that, of the reason. That number is yeah. based on the answer we was that's absolutely where we're going. When well, we right. went with the principles, so that, yeah. Yeah. just oh, that okay. Okay. But I think that's something that we'll, between now and then, you know, have, make sure that we have the school committee priorities for in case the dialogue yeah. comes up as Mark indicated. But yeah. I think I just continue, John, John ended at where, where are we looking at for next year and that 900,000, and so part of our decision making too was um, you know, how do you, making sure that we're making decisions for what we're doing this year that are going to position us appropriately for the potential for next year, which I don't even want to think about because I think that takes me back to like, I don't know, 2003 yeah. with Pat the, and ending with Harry and starting with Pat and just being in just such a structural deficit and being decimated. The sad part is, since then, we have addressed that. I have not been able to address that science curriculum. I just think, if you want to look at one thing, that is that's sort of a, a symbol for me of our inability to really meet the needs. And you have to commit to three years to do that, to implement a curriculum. We are so far behind the eight ball. You can look at so many things that have been on the wish list over the years. That is the consistent thing, and it just says to me that we we have just not been able to, you know, get that per pupil moving in the right direction or whatever. And I'm next that nine hundred thousand dollars. And it's not too late. Is it too late to back out of the race? Okay. <laughs> Talk to Jordan. <laughs> <laughs> Did I see another question? Bill, did you have a question? Oh, just on, on the building maintenance that when it comes up. Okay. Yeah, that's the next section. Did we Mark, any Mark, I, 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 I have a quick question. If you go back to the slide on the offsets, can you, I, I know you tried to explain this to me, it's probably my, my inability to understand it and your ability to explain it, but can you explain how offsets are used to, to basically balance a budget? Right. I mean, you had talked I, about... I no, I'm looking at school. Oh, here. Here? No. Um, no, was in the, was when you, saw, when you talk about how you're going to close, how you're going to close the gap, there was... Yeah, the next I, one. The, the, this one. Uh, no. Sorry. No? No. It was that one. It was in red. It's the one that I think I have. There we go. Oh, okay. Sorry. So, oh, in your summary of reductions, so increasing a METCO offset, for example. So, or, uh, how does that, so is that basically taking money like next year's money to balance this no, year's budget? No, or not at all. How not is at all. That? Each year we receive a METCO grant for a certain amount based on our, based on what we get. It's an entitlement grant because we participate. Of that money, a portion of it is a, is set aside for transportation. A significant portion of the medical grant covers for transportation. Other districts charge specific teacher salaries to the grant, as you are allowed. It's appropriate. We take it as an offset because our medco students are through our district, so we use it as an offset against our salary line, spread out based on where the students are. So we we calculate literally the 70 students. 4% are here, 5% are here, and we take that, that offset and just appropriate it. So it's not a cut, per se, the way cutting power educators, you know, you know, you're not cutting so what we did positions, this year. You're, you're just sort of moving the money to a different place. Is that 
No, we took no. more of it. So this year our offset, our budgeted offset from Metco is seventy five thousand dollars. Next year our budgeted offset from Metco is a hundred. So if you increase the offsets, whether it be a Metco or the Rise program or any of that, does it impact the delivery of the service of that particular function? Okay. Hopefully for that year, no. No, right. But will it impact it for next year because you're taking more? As you continually to take more or use more of an offset, if you're giving more than yeah. no, 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 it, it does. It's, you do it's, run up against that chance that you're then not going to have the money in that current budget. And that's the number you have to start with for your fall to when you start right. developing your next year's budget. Very comparable to how the town talks about free cash, the use of our revolving accounts. If we continue to increase our reliance on them, that's where you set the bar for the following year. And so if you have a year that METCO funding is decreased at 80%, but well, we know we still have to transport them. So that's where all the money goes, and then we're, right. we're moving the cost back to the operating budget, if that makes sense. It, it, it does, but it, it just, it, when you say, you know, increasing an offset, I mean, the impact of that is larger than just sort of what the language says. I mean, because what you're doing is that you're basically taking the money you know, to balance your budget, but you're impacting the service we, delivery we, of the future. We are, but when we looked at our offsets, we strategically picked the revolving accounts that we felt we could do this with. We just didn't unilaterally choose a revol oh, let's choose this one. I mean, like, for example, I used the special education tuition one. Our special education tuition revolving account was healthy enough that we felt we could, for one year, use that amount to offset the decrease in circuit breaker. Next year, when circuit breaker goes back up, we don't need to take as much from that revolving account. So essentially, it's like borrowing money, right? No. Well, it's well not. the free cash yeah. analogy, I, I that think it's helpful. Right? Yeah. 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 It's that's not helpful to me. The, the, yes. the so money exists. It's there. You yeah. regenerate free cash, you are able yeah. to regenerate right. those funds. But if and we and rely and too and much on those, we point, we're going to want to pay still. Right. And we regenerate our revolving funds every year by you know, virtue of the special education tuition one. We're, we're fortunate that we've built a number of wonderful in-district programs that North Reading and other towns pay us to send their children here rather than pay an out-of-district. Those children goes away, that revenue stream goes away. So it's, it's, a, it's a fine balance, if you will. Mr. Robinson, Robinson, yeah, we, Mr. Robinson we, when we, Barry, when, we, uh, when the school committee voted on this, there was a lot of discussion. And you know, before we signed off on it, we wanted to make sure that the revolving funds weren't at a perilous level uh, for the future or for the immediate future and, and we were comfortable with that. So we didn't just recklessly, you know, spend, you know, empty the savings account out to, to, to fund this year. Yeah, no, but my, my point is, is that, is that it's really a cost. I mean, it really is a cost because you are taking money that's in that revolving fund to, to pay to fill a budget gap. Right, and then so it's a cho it's a choice of, of that's of, what it's there for. Right? Yeah, it only can be used for those specific purposes. You can't use it for any part of the budget. You have to use by law. You can only use those revolving accounts for those purposes. What it forces us to do is be much, much, much more accurate on projecting what our budget is for next year because that revolving account is now much smaller. So if we're off or there's an unexpected cost in that cost center, we're really in trouble. So. That's how I've always looked at that revolving fund as protection against an unknown for the, for the next year. I was just going to, um, Dr. Darty actually said part of what I was going to say in that that revolving account money, it says increasing the Metco asset, but it's still paying for resources and for services that the Metco students are receiving. So they're not receiving fewer services because that money is going to this. They are benefiting from the way this money is being spent. Any other questions? Yeah. Um, so how many out district students do we have coming in here for special education? I think right now it's four or five. Yeah. Is that a good thing? for? Um, we always talk about it's not really a revenue program, the tuition we pay for or we ask people to pay for school day kindergarten. How does that work when other? This isn't. Uh, this is very targeted. We don't. T it's, it's special needs only. So other out of. We're not a school choice district. Right. So we don't receive other students into the district. This yeah. is on an availability 
Um, we just launched a new program at Coolidge called the Compass, Compass Program. And so we have dedicated resources in that classroom already. If we only have two or three students and we can bring in two or three students to help bring up the numbers, it, it's a benefit to both the, both the teachers and the students to have more kids enrolled in it to a certain threshold. The other, the sending district, like North Reading in this case, they would be spending upward of sixty or seventy thousand to place that student Excellent. at another okay. program, whereas we don't charge as much as that because we want them to come but here. But we're still to benefit. like charging more than oh, yeah. we're paying. And, and oh, if yeah. it requires oh, yeah. the, the student to have a paraeducator with them, they would they, pay they for pay the paraeducator para well. too. Yeah. Okay. So it's not costing us. Anymore. It doesn't sound like a huge bond. No, it's definitely. Not. And we, it's only for certain programs that we may have available space. Space. It's not for every. Move on to facility. Bob is going to um, walk us through this one. Find it here. There you go. So, um, as you're aware, we um, uh, the school department facilities uh, help manage the town buildings as well, and so this is just um, by uh, object by um, category. Uh, the largest line item here is the other expenses. That's where all our utility expenses are captured. Um, we have three custodial staff that help maintain the seven buildings on the town side. That's, um, that expense is captured in the other salaries line. Um, not a lot in terms of uh, supplies and contracted services, I believe, is um, the uh, cleaning services that we contract out for a couple of the buildings. Right. Now, now we'll ask the question at the right time. Oh, sure. Why is not the cemetery building under the facilities department? We're the only building in town that is not serviced by eight people. I have, I, I'm seven months into my tenure here, and, and I have, yeah. I don't know the history, the history behind the history that. that. So why, why isn't it? I, I like so I just said I'm, I'm seven a, months I think into. A, a Bob and selectman. Yeah, yeah, I think that's probably a question of Tessa. Well, in terms of where it should be in line. Well, between him and Bob, I think between the superintendent and Bob, because I think that was the original agreement between a previous uh, superintendent and a previous town manager. It was in before, but it's not in now, is that what you're saying? It was never in. Oh, it was never in. We have oh, never been it, in. It was, it and may have been discussed, frankly, but you said it was never you in. Know, we spend a lot of money, have spent a lot of money on that building, only because it's almost as old as I am. In fact, it is older than I am. It's 91 years old. And, uh, we can definitely but, find out. And by the way, if uh, anybody's interested, we're having an open house at the building on April the 11th. Come up and look at a nice little... The town? The building, not, not, you know, we're not going to have here any lot. We don't mind. Nine to nine. 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 Nine <laughs> sure. So, um, so we wanted to just um, kind of illustrate the budget similar to how we present the the school department budget with the same um, function codes that we uh, that we use on the school side. So, as you can see, custodial staff um, and uh, cleaning that's the largest at two hundred fifty-two thousand. Um, heating is the next largest at 139, not the next one, I'm sorry, utilities, which is uh, electricity and water sewer. Um, just so, so for your information, I think it was in the budget book, um, both Bob Lillisher and I reached out to RMLD to get estimated rates for electricity for next year. So our rates in both the school and the town budgets for utilities was reflective of that estimated rate increase. And, and as I mentioned earlier, we use a five-year average of consumption. Um, and then we test it against the prior year just to make sure that we're not lowering it somehow, that it's not an outlying anomaly. So we were pretty good at budgeting for that. So, and, then, and how about for the natural gas? Where did you base that up? Um, that, what did I base that on? That was um, previous conversations. Our, our contract is up for renewal beginning of June. We're still trying to finalize a, a number with um, our Tradition Energy, which has gone out to market for us. And we anticipate, we used, a, I want to say about a 9% increase in the budget. We did get better guidance. And so in the second round, uh, not second round, but we did give better guidance to, to the town manager and readjust the numbers um, prior to finalizing the school committee budget, prior to the school committee voting. 
What, so if, if you're not it's in the heating that, number. Yeah, so what, what's driving that? It's, oh, it's um, an increase in consumption. Yeah, so um, the FY15 budget for, util for natural gas, oddly enough at the DPW, was not, didn't even cover what we spent last year. So, oh, we, so and we have noticed, and, and, we have been, and we have been in, in contact with, um, with DPW to talk about what, what might be driving the increase in consumption at the, the DPW garage, um, because there, we, we have seen a significant spike. I'm just looking for a second. The fiscal 14. I'm sorry? The, the price per decatherm Deca is down. Down right now, yes. And we had a low contract. Our contract price, I think, is pretty close to where the market is right now. And you think you'll lock in at a higher price than you, than you were in the last It's contract. originally what we were being told. told. Yes. We think it's going to When be we first started developing this budget, it was what we were being told. Well, yeah. Because okay. hmm. the market at the time was pretty volatile, so we're hoping we can lock it in low and then everyone benefits from that. Yeah. yeah. Is, it, is it a one year? Are you posing a question to the DPW about, or you were already... We, we have, we're, uh, Kelly Cologne, our director of facilities, and I have been talking with uh, Joe Huggins and, um, and Jeff about what might be driving it, and um, so we'll, we'll figure it out. Maybe the door open. <laughs> That's what's driving it. <laughs> That's well, this one, they probably... Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, and then the last slide that I have uh, is really just to give you a snapshot. Yeah. Really just to give you a snapshot of um, of by building, just where where we're at. So, um, and you can see the DPW that that adopted budget really um, the the heating line item for that was was artificially low. So um, so they are in line. The FY16 budget for DPW is in line with what they actually spent in FY14. It's just the year over year. Anything um, unique with the fire? We drowned in the two fire stations. Um, I know that we did have some repairs, and that might be what's mm -hmm. in the interest. There system. have been some repairs to the yeah. yeah. I think they put in new windows in the outside. Yes. The floor. Yeah. Yeah. They did the flooring at right. one of them, yeah. yeah. So this falls under the schools? Yes, facilities. Yeah, they have all town facilities. You'll notice there's no directors in this, but that's because it's under the school. This is just the maintenance of it. That's just the maintenance of it. Not all. All the one. <laughs> all the one. <all. laughs> <laughs> Which was agreed upon years ago. <laughs> Not by anybody in this room. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> but I'll keep passing on it to you guys. You can get an initial and you'll be responsible for that. Okay. So that's it. That, that was it. Okay. Any further questions? Oh, we do have the questions. So, oh, yes. Um, questions before we go so I don't know how you want. Yeah. I do. If you want to stick with all of those, or um, yeah, how do you want to go through? Um, I, I think I did have a couple of questions. Um, Should also add that there are 105 questions that were asked yeah. mm -hmm. during our budget process that are also in the back yeah. of the budget. Mm -hmm. I'll ask one quick one when we're about figuring that out. Just jumping backwards, the, um, <coughs> uh, athletics and extracurricular fees. Mm -hmm. you know, when we've either initially established them or raised them in the past. Any noticeable decrease in participation? I know you've talked before about there is assistance to you know, people who can't afford the increased mm -hmm. fee, I assume I'm right there. Have we noticed anything you know, when we've increased those fees? Are we losing any participants? It's proportionate to the size of the class. Okay. So, so we have not... The question was asked during our discussions yeah. and we haven't yet Noticed, okay. it, uh, noticed a decrease, but the committee is very concerned that there is a tipping point. Just wondering if people know that yeah. that assistance is there, right? Because the we, tipping point is yep. somewhere. We, yeah. sure we hit it or we're just short we of it. We make sure that everybody knows that there's assistance available, and we're constantly looking at the numbers of participants each season to see if it's going down, to see if we finally hit yeah. that, that mark. 
there, there was only one time, the one fee when we put the fee in a few years ago on the clubs. Right, Which we then eliminated. We, we eliminated. Yeah. So that was the one place where, it must have been four or five years ago, we added a fee for just clubs, like Young Engineers Club or Robots. And that really did impact the participation. Now all of those. So we eliminated. They have parent booster. Every one of those clubs has a parent booster. Donation. Um, follow up question to um, my the seventh question um, relating to resources associated with um, assisting Joshua Eaton. Oh, um, does, did the level three uh, rating come with additional resources from the state to assist yes. the district? Yes. Yes. Okay. I believe it's it, it's a you did get some additional state. Okay. I see, I see state funding, but I didn't know if that was existing state funding or if additional. Funding. No, we did get some additional okay. funding. Okay. And then. Uh, on question eight, relating to school resource officers and uh, the school to prison pipeline, I was wondering if there have there been issues with student arrests in schools or no? We don't no. have. Okay. We have. I can't think of the last time we had an arrest. Very good to hear. That's very good to hear. I didn't know we had a. No, I didn't know we had a school to prison pipeline. Yeah. <laughs> the school, the school <laughs> resource <laughs> officer um, is more of a resource, and it's not there to see to be seen as a deterrent. More than a, it's a resource uh, for both students and for staff. Mm -hmm. And I know in other districts there are issues, so I just was wondering oh, yeah, how no, it worked no. in, in running it. That's great to hear. From a technology standpoint, um, I saw you're on a five to six year replacement cycle. Yes. That's a little long for hardware. It is. Um, <laughs> it is. How expensive <laughs> would it be to go to even like a four to five? It probably has to go to about $250,000 a, a year. I mean, right now, actually, that, that, that is something. spend? Uh, no, a year for replenishment. Because right now it's 100000 we spend. Yeah. So, so you're spending. We're spending six hundred thousand every six years. Uh, we just started this replenishment cycle. I believe we're in our second and third. Actually, last year we cut it by fifty. Yeah, this is our third seven. year. And, and it is something. By I, and I, the town manager and I have had discussions about this. And, and I know this is probably more of a, a financial forum discussion. But to have technology replenishment as a possible accommodated cost for both town and school, since it is a necessity. Um, also, with the park test, you're going to have to be yep. using computers. And yep. A six-year-old computer isn't going to work. Right. As, Correct. <laughs> uh, it, it doesn't help too much with park, but another thing that's been quite successful in the district, thanks to Dr. Dory, has been the BYOD system. So students bringing in their own devices and putting them on a network at schools. It doesn't. It, it, it helps. It's, it's yeah. made a difference for students to be able to do um, that. A lot of the technology when you're doing park tests, they can't use computers for anything else. During the testing test, periods, that's correct. Which is yes. close to a month, yep. so they can't use any. Yeah, that's computers. correct. Yeah. And that takes place at the same time in all schools yeah. across the system? The, the, new, the, 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 the first testing round that we're going to start on Monday, yes, we are going to do it that way, just because we want to see how it works, so we want to make sure we're coordinated. Um, as we get more comfortable with it, it probably will change a little bit. But we want to make sure our resources are allocated effectively for this first round. Dr. Gurdy, one more point. Uh, we received allocations from town meeting last year, last year, last year, last year specifically for that as that well. So to purchase additional computers. Yeah. Yes. More is always better. I, I just want to make sure. Yeah. No, there's <laughs> no room in the budget. But. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's such an integrated part of the classroom now, and every right. day that it's. Any other like questions from the? I mean, I'm, on that point, and I guess it goes to the science curriculum and a bunch of things. Like, what kind of what kind of out, outreach do we do for let's call it sponsorship? I don't even know if that's the right word, but I'm sure there there are a bunch of companies out there willing to give computers or, or, or heavily subsidized computers for um, if we if we asked. And I'm not sure. I mean, I don't know. I've never done the research myself. But is there any any opportunity to to sort of to get help new, us? New computers or old? yeah, new com new computers. Because all the computers we've been. They oh, try no, to no, give us those. Right, right, right. You don't want that. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. Uh, but newer computers, like, like, is, you know, does Microsoft help? Does, you know, Dell help? Does yeah, not, not, not to the limit, not to the effect that you think it would. I mean, they okay. focus the more on, 
like I know that and I go back to the robotics, but the robotics yeah. um, first first league gets heavy sponsorship from from corporations like that. Okay. Because they're investing in a program that they know is going to produce engineers right. and computer scientists that then will go work for Microsoft. Right. Um, so you know that's where it, it, there are some grants that are out there. Um, matching grants that you can access, but they're not, there's not a lot out there right. um, to act to get technology. But do we put a, do we put the word out? Because I feel like there's a lot of resources just in the town. People just working for Microsoft who could go in and say, hey, the town needs a donation. Can we, um, you know, of, That of has X, happened, it more happens at the building level. Yeah. Okay. So you'll have a parent that works for, say, Microsoft. Right, right. And right. will be able to get you 10 computers if the PTO buys 10 computers. Gotcha. So it's a matching type, it's a matching. and that's happened. We've done, that's happened before. We have a Reading Education yes. Foundation okay. that does that. Uh, okay, that's not part of the school department, but it does the same. So the, the, the topic I thought you were going with the um, pro sponsorship and the funding, for instance, Reading Cooperative is that a uh, so they're in there and they're a corporate face, and that's you know it's really good for them. We use Reading Co-op. Uh, and I, the Reading Education Foundation does as well. They, Reading, Reading Co-op does sponsor several uh, events that we have. They have a, just the ATM in the building? No, branch. No, they we have, have a branch. branch. No, no so, ATM. No, no, so what no ATM. ATM. Yeah, I wish there was an ATM. <laughs> <laughs> so what's our relationship with a uh, corporation like that in the school? They just... Uh, they provide, they provide uh, personnel for banking classes. Um, so we have actual students that are working in the bank there. Um, so they, they do provide support that way. Okay, so we don't they're, charge them for the space? Uh, no, they give in-kind services in lieu of rent. And that was an agreement that was put together years ago. Okay. I just wanted to point out that it was thanks to a collaboration between the RPF and Reading Cooperative Bank that we have new physics labs in the high school. Right, that's great. That without them we could not have had that. Mm -hmm. um, as well as other programs that they funded, they funded a world of difference for years and have funded it halfway for the next two more years. So they've been really, they've stepped up. Yeah, Rain, Rain Corporate Bank has been a real friend of the school. Great. So, I mean, but Mark, go to Mark's question, you know, whether there's other sponsorship opportunities. It's probably the wrong way, but are there other um, relationships that we could do to help us help us solve some we of these can, We're always open to looking at them, and we certainly can. I just wanted to say that the, make sure we understand that the um, banking, the relationship with bank co-op also is impacts teaching and learning. And there's been there's great work that's being done there, not just having students who are not on the bank bank branches classes. This club they compete in some yeah, it's, they, yeah. banking. They've Teach gone classes. to Olin College or wherever they go. You know, so it's a great relationship and. Um, and just to make sure that you know the Reading Education Foundation. It's not strictly technology. No. Mm -hmm. They they support the, they provide grants that are teacher initiated grants. That's how this, mm -hmm. the physics lab came about. Is teachers write grants and submit them to REF, and all of the grants are uh, it's all really vetted, at, at, so it's consistent with the mission and the vision and the superintendent. They are basically our R and D. Division. Okay. So yeah. That's great. Yeah. That's they fund really good. No, yeah. They fund the innovation. Were they responsible for most of the smart boards? Those a lot of no. 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 no, no, that was mostly PDT. That was mostly okay. PDT. And the high school building and, and building projects. I was just gonna say that the another way that the school has brought in funding not just for the the schools but also for the town is through these events like the robotics, the first robotics event, which brought 40 different communities here for a whole weekend. Um, we've also had color guard competitions and band competitions where the people come and they spend. So they have lunch, they help pay, they buy at the cafeteria, which supports our parent groups that are supporting our in our clubs but they also go out on the town and have dinner and lunch and so it's bringing um meals tax, right? yeah. <laughs> exactly. meals tax. Yeah. Yeah. that's the best part of the yeah. yeah any other questions comments public income yeah I have one more question how are we doing with uh, teacher turnover um, 
I noticed in one of the slides here it talks about average salaries being $5,500 less than the average in the state. How is that affecting the town and are people leaving for higher paying positions? Um, I, I think there are some that, that do leave for that reason. I mean, there, people leave for a variety of reasons. Um, and, you know, some it is you know, because they, they go to a similar position in another district that's, that's a significantly higher salary. Um, yeah, so it's, it's that, it's also attracting people that I, I think that's where also we feel, you know, we, where we feel that the problem, and it, it varies depending on the position. So, you know, if you're looking for like a physics teacher at the high school, um, you know, that, that's a high profile position that, that you're going to be competing with other school districts for that that person, um, so you you have to have a comparable wage, you know, to do that. You know, so that's where we we seem to get hit in those areas, the critical areas that mm -hmm. that are uh, the where the pool isn't as deep. But I, I can say we have. I know of, uh, a couple of years ago we lost a, uh, a really strong English teacher to the district that I was working in. A substantial increase in pay. Loss or theft? <laughs> 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 no, no, nothing new. <laughs> my town reports the last hundred years said the same thing. We should just read those instead of having these meetings. <laughs> no, thank you. Uh, other comments, questions? We good? Nothing changes. Thank you guys very much. Thank Mark, you. Thank, very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Just so you all know the schedule coming up. Yep. So next week we will be going through the enterprise funds and looking at the warrant. And then the following week, so it is the 11th or the 18th, the 25th is actually the vote on the budgets by, by group. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you guys for all coming out. Thank you. Um, motion to adjourn. Good job. Thank you. Thank you. I'm at Central Office at the high school. So we're around the back of the high school. The Rise Preschool is right next to us. Oh, so yeah. So if you want to stop by, I'll leave it with Frank, you'll be
please go through that. Uh, I assume Bob will present that next week. So I think that's probably the first thing on the agenda. After that, we're going to go through the warrant for annual town meeting. So every town meeting is uh, structured by and founded by a warrant of articles that the Board of Selectmen um, brings forward. They agree on what's going to be discussed, then it comes forward in the warrant, and that's it. At a certain point in time, nothing else can be brought up to that town meeting. So we have the, so the annual town meeting, which is the end of April. And what we'll do is we'll look at all of the articles that have financial implications. And this came from reports back to town meeting on any article that touches finances, because money goes to finances. So we'll look at all of the non-budget articles next week. And I say non-budget because we're then going to have discussions about the budget specifically and all the different things. We go through um, basically by, not by line item, but by category. We vote on each one individually. Um, we look at it, we have a discussion about it, there can be amendments made to it, uh, and then we take a vote. Income actually presents the budget to town meeting. So we're going to let the town manager's budget and any modifications that it makes. At the end of the day, income is the one that actually presents the budget to town meeting. Are there additional discussions between income and each of the various departments um, after the amendments to uh, after we make the final vote on each of the ones? Other than Bob's presence at the meeting and anyone else who chooses to be there, no. We at that meeting the twenty fifth. Amendments that we agree to or not agree to, and then that's it. That's the budget that we present without further discussion until town meeting. And then town meeting then can make amendments to it. Town meeting will just then write down a vote. Um, there's an open and a precinct. You have to, you have to be there the entire time you're not going to be at town meeting and just vote. Okay. Yeah. Can you be both or not? Yes, yes, right. no. The only other function we can have in town formally is to be a town meeting member or not a member. I think the nomination is already closed. So. So um, I don't know that we're going to have a long meeting next week, although as soon as I say that, I'm sure we're going to go on through that. Um, but I, I don't think that the enterprise fund will take a long time to go through it. I'm sure a lot of questions on, and I, don't, I haven't actually seen the warrant. I don't know if actually it's in there. Um, but they'll mention that um, there's a cemetery building that's in there. There are a bunch of different things that will be on the warrant that we will present. I don't know if that actually is on there. He said it did. Transfers the maintenance of the uh, cemetery building over the school looks like a reasonable amount of expense. <laughs> <laughs>
occasionally um, we would use, if we have a lot of free cash, we use it for, for special projects, special one-time projects in the desk, because if it doesn't involve people and recurring costs, then that one-time expenditure really can make sense. So a good example, Marshall Classroom being a great example. Rose, Rose. Rose. The discussion that was brought up last week, uh, kind of a surprise on the Birch Meadow fields, mm -hmm. things like that. Anything that's coming up that's actually doing something. So is that an example of a no. site? No. I just want to say, so the capital projects, typically the town is taking anything over $2 million. figures out what it needs in terms of capital requests and activities. And typically anything that's in well over a million bucks, or certainly over two million bucks, is in that capital area. So typically the projects that come through and we look at as part of our capital policy, this has been 5% actually, um, until this past year where based on discussions with DPW and with town managers, we suggested to them 4.5%. And part of that is because of there are so many projects because we've done a pretty good job in the last few years that we probably should take a short break. And that's what we're suggesting to them, just to sit still for a little bit. So uh, back to kind of capital projects. So um, something that's kind of in this million dollar sort of range, kind of on the edge of what's going on, but conceivably could be funded without you know, going through a, a uh, without capital request and specifically without going to the, the voters and trying to raise additional funds for it. So the schools were in the Montreal class Each year, excess funds, or there's been one-off reasons over the last couple of years that money has been returned to and regenerated in that uh, free cash. Yeah. So, so for example, so the lighting, they said that there's the perspective of um, additional income cash due to extra fees or extended hours of providing. Right. That, that's more a lower operating cost that might come from it, mm -hmm. but they're still looking for the Let's talk a little bit about kind of spending money. So in the last several years, we've had sufficient funds in the reserve accounts, free cash and, and general reserve, to, oh, sorry, in a third piece to regeneration, which will take some place each year, more than was expected, to be able to take some of the funds from free cash and use it to support the operating budget, um, which is great in the sense that if you've got it, you can use it for that. The problem is that gets built into the budget. Let's say you, you hire too many people. That's an ongoing cost. Mm -hmm. You only do it over one time funding. So that defines what we're trying to fill for. So the last several years, we've been funding between $1 and $1.5 million of free cash into the operating budget. In January of each year, Big Town meets with our financial forum. We give budget guidance on what the, what the town departments and the schools should plan into their budget based on what we believe is, is reasonable and sustainable. So that's the 2.5 some nine. two big issues are health, the huge issue is still getting the, the large <coughs> amount of the budget. On health, we hit it by, by about a million, which is a great thing. Uh, on 
big and this is why we need this if we don't have a different president. Yeah. So we need to actually fund an additional eight point five grand out of free cash to cover the shortfall in twenty eight. I think we don't know what we have we have to set the annual goal of the budget before we know what the state is because the, the, the state's budget process, they don't even give you the budget until like end of June. So the red angle is in in April. So right. you're saying, okay, we're gonna get thirteen million somewhere it always has we don't know how much they'll be there we've been reasonably conservative in the past and a little bit less conservative this last year in terms of how much we, we put into the, the operating budget based on because we kept thinking that with the rest of the generation free cash was coming down because we're spending a million and a half dollars and lo and behold last year it actually went way up um, and so that said it's now became the whole problem the whole problem is that everybody is spending to within these very low despite having fundamental needs in the country, we get needy above that. And now it's a, it's a push pull. It's, if this is all the funds that the town is willing to authorize by taxation, then you're gonna have to have dramatic cuts. And if the town is willing to entertain a, a override, a budget override, or excuse me, a, uh, a, a, a be a debt override in this case, then there are other things that we can fund. Part of the reason for asking the town and the school <laughs> so here, where we are is we're the, the group that has to advise town meeting about the finances of the town. So in addition to kind of reviewing what's happening, we need to also be looking way forward as to what's sustainable, what's not sustainable, what's going to happen, you know, what's going to happen. We've been trying to warn everybody we need to think about it, it's coming. Uh, this year we need to hammer it because next year is all the, I mean, there's no choice. There isn't sufficient free cash to fill all the funding. School says it's 900. The town will do at least 600 you know, on top of that. There's a million five at least. Well, this is where I think there will be some work because the floor engineering class in kindergarten don't have the floor cash. It's mostly the, the driven by school day demands versus actual. It's not an exponential kindergarten increase, but it is exponential how many kids want full days. That's part of helping. And you got a ball.
juggling there? Is everybody juggling to figure out what, what should be there? Well, the other thing is, is school buses for a toddler. So even if you say you can have an extra couple hundred thousand because you like kids that spend it on this, they don't have to spend it on other benefits. Correct. That's the they way. might not get it for next year if they don't. Just thinking through that when you get to the school, it's one number. Right. Because it's the school that it's the school committee that determines how they allocate. Even though there's it's what, two and a half times the size of the regular budget, it's one line item on the that yeah. determines yeah. the yeah. Well, I already think the school committee's done. Well it's the school. It can school make a recommendation yeah. but it's done. <laughs> well actually it's the school committee's budget, it's not done. John presents the school committee and then they adjust the number of points the school committee gets. Is that a normal arrangement? Yeah. That's our LD is the same thing. Our that's LD that's is much different it where for probably what the last two years it was we really need it or we're not going to be able to maintain and continue down this path right. we're now there i mean to your point the message is it's an override or we're going back the other way so it's no more how much longer can we hold on can we can we do this for a little bit longer can we scrape one or two more years uh, i think we're clearly that. telling yeah. that's what yeah. that's what yeah. we did yeah. But even even last year, year, right? Even last year, year, wasn't there a little? There was, it maybe not the maybe not our intention the way we said it, but I think the way it was heard was we're not there at the cliff just yet. I'm not sure how it was heard. Well, (laughs) what we said was I don't want to get rid. I mean, it kind of was like put yourself on note, and that's that's kind of but that wasn't the message in the town. Seven uh, overhead for a fire engine, a physics lab, uh, 
paving, some street, and you, it's like a it's like a menu at a restaurant. You go out, check this off, and check that off, and and those are usually bad things because what it does is that it pits factions of the town against each other, the school parents against the public safety people or whatever. Whereas when we've done it in the past, or, or, or how it's been done, is that essentially it's one number, and it's kind of organized in a way that says, well, we're not just going to do this to keep the service that we have. Usually it's like we're going to keep the service and we're going to add something that's the town mm -hmm. really wants that, that we built through consensus. And I think what people have told me is that usually what happens is it loses in the first year. Right? And then what happens like this? So the whole time serious. And so cut, cuts happen first, and right. then they, and say, then they go, oh, really are you are lying. We are bleeding. Right. Now it's time to get yeah. the band aids. Specifically, by we get a tax increase for five years or whatever the number of years it is, those pay down there. I always thought it was 15 years. Yeah, yeah. 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 it's more than five. Yeah. 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 Call it tax, yeah. yeah. whatever number it is. So if you wanted to kind of carve out your tax bill and say, geez, how much am I paying total of X? You could look at it and say, well, it used to be this, and I'm up two and a half percent, and now I'm paying this amount for the library. So that's in there. When the library's paid for,
Was the name Christian? Because they're not going to use the word Christian anymore. Um, they're they're probably going to start doing contract work for what they started. You know, they started with the kitchen and kind of kept it Christian and kind of changed it. And the next three months, they became a club. Well, in summer, in summer, not all of it. Just because of the crew, so that they can start with. So some of the people million dollars. So right. so okay, there's no. Uh, yeah, and, and I think yeah. to that point, I think the support. I think, <laughs> there's, I think so there's more support. Than there's you there's a lot of support. There's a lot of support for us. There's been tons. The of audience support. was all. Uh, the, the audience yeah. was all support. Yeah. What I would hope and what I asked John to go for was to really make sure that they that they could figure this out. Yeah. Yeah. That it's not kind of a uh, that let's do something. We don't have a really thought out plan because it wasn't meant to happen for several years. with putting the Mondo class and all these programs free stuff and not making it really for a capital improvement role. So it's been like, boom, next week another one comes up. Mm -hmm. Like, so that was yeah. yeah, at some point, Then at some point, point we have to say no. Like, because Mondo classrooms, that, that's exactly where that gap, that's exactly where that pain should have come from. I mean, that's what free class is for. I disagree. I think we were put on the spot and we did what we had to do. It's an important problem, but I don't, I don't agree and I don't think we really had a good discussion about it. The way it was that if the funds weren't allocated then we would not be able to accommodate 36 percent so if it went to the capital trust that we wouldn't be able to do that right so you know yes that was pressure but a lot of pressure yeah. this that because there's that, some capital out there that, that we have that now it's sitting there and couldn't be dedicated to that so i'm just i'm just saying we can't be in the habit of doing that it's the right thing to do right i i i, I don't like this process of get something and we have to vote on it the next day for a large amount of money. I don't mm -hmm. think that that's a great process. I think it's a bad mm -hmm. process. Mm -hmm. I think at some point we have the pressure of, of saying no just to correct the process, which mm -hmm. isn't a great spot to be in. You don't want to be saying no to a good idea, right. but you're right. It, 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 at some point it gets it gets out of control. I mean, Are million dollar requests need more time than yeah. right, you know, one at night to and, right. and it could be a special you know, one that's crucial. Be the bad guy. <laughs> right? I mean, is this yeah, is this unusual so historically? Is it, is this one year, it's been like no, two special $1 million but, requests in space for a month. Know, yeah, I'd say that's unusual. Over the long term, <laughs> is that something that we've seen in the past? Uh, things getting kind of pushed into no, the No, right it's just million dollar requests out of nowhere. I think it's because we have free stuff. Yeah, I think oh, as the okay, budget okay. crapped so, out, people are yeah. like, spend it. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and a one-time expenditure right. is preferred. Some number much less, not just a million two compared to a million one. Is it reasonable? I mean, they, I was at the meeting last week, and so they went through some of the last benefits of it and what they wanted to do and how they approach it. But as a, as FitCom, is can we ask something like, well, what is the revenue difference going to be? What is the anticipated revenue by 
doing it this year as opposed to, because that wasn't something, I, it was my first meeting of the year. This is exactly the problem with a, a situation that kind of just you know, rolls down the, the middle of the alley. Yeah, we got this deadline, maybe it's a deadline. Right. Yeah. Um, but yeah. it, 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 so it wouldn't be, a, it would be overreaching for FinCom to look at the, the different um, budget items within a budget and say, well, you know what, I think, and, and they're all, and they're all self-contained, so you couldn't, so FinCom couldn't be like, you know what, let's, let's leave the fields for another day, but make sure there are social workers in each of the schools. Like that's over, would that be overreach, is that kind of calculus be overreaching on the part of FinCom so to, again, to balance the different priorities? You're gonna break it into two pieces. Yeah. One is financial responsibility reporting to town meeting, and the other is um, what are the town priorities? The town priority, the town meeting's gonna vote. If it's on the warrant, the town meeting gets to vote on it already. Yeah. The question is, what's our recommendation and why? So. It's not just, yeah, the numbers all, you know, check, everything's yeah. fine, you know, project size equals 10, okay, you know, let's vote on it. Um, it really is, you know, given all the things going on, is this, is it, you know, is, is this um, making sense for us to vote it then? From, so not from a town priority, but from a financial responsibility perspective, right? So, for example, they're going to ask for, in this case, a million dollars of, of free cash. Um, we need to look at where free cash really is. You know, so, you know, Sharon's numbers from Suggest that it's down at six million, below six million. So are we willing to spend a million of that? Not only with regeneration grant, but we're willing to spend a million dollars. That's fiscally responsible at this point. While that's we are also presenting the idea of an override. Yeah. Too. So yeah. that's where, you know, I think the more we have the override discussion, the more town meeting. Extent yeah. with decisions like do we spend a million dollars on the lights or do we spend a million dollars on modular classrooms? And yeah. so, to my clear, to my clear, that 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 I mean, no, 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 right. yeah. we said yes, but but <laughs> the fact that we've said yes doesn't change the fact that people will right look to that as oh, an example yeah. of yeah. you authorize this, you authorize yeah. it. But I think you know if we had our druthers, if I had my druthers, uh -huh. I'd look forward and I'd say. Okay, we've got all these different priorities and things, and the you know, this Birch Meadows project, which was scheduled for later, would have been one of the great examples of why, uh, frankly, we didn't override it. Because where the fund comes in on this would have been what the poster child for it. Mm -hmm. um, but it's it's come in, you know, differently. So we, you know, we, when first of all, we, we need to see you know what the presentation is and what they're talking about. Um, you know, hopefully, it's part of a, a long term. There hasn't been an official ask yet, right? Well, in the warrant, there's a placeholder for something out of fiscal right, so which, which, again, the, the I only became warrant. aware of last yeah. Wednesday. I think all of us became mm -hmm. aware of it last Wednesday. So on a day-to-day -day manager, manager to day to ask, if they would, you know, in terms of figuring out where the town can go for funds, yeah. parks, historical library renovations, like, how do we want to ask the, you know, yeah, so the bigger questions? selectmen have pushed back on the CPA in, in town in, in you know one of them in particular said no no it's not it's our meeting right now yeah. yeah yeah like in the last several weeks okay um, everything I hear about it implies that it would probably result in us getting several hundred thousand dollars more than we currently have and in my view that makes it interesting to explore further mm -hmm. I don't get the impression anyone's going to do that unless we do it yeah. so okay. so if someone is willing to kind of jump on that and take a look at it, I think that's probably how we get a jump started. At least understanding better what it is and we can come back to the board and suggest, you know, hey guys, wait a minute, what do you guys think about it? So just on the day to day, like some days are there a lot of hearings at Warren and uh, and yeah, yeah. okay. So, you know, vers versus the last time we looked at it, the programs changed, it has been restrained and it's working like Emil's taxes, but so what what would we need to I think it'd be great to look at some towns that are participating in it now and see what results they've, they've been able to get from it. Mm -hmm. I think it'd be worth talking to Senator Lewis's office because mm -hmm. I think they would be willing to do some of the heavy lifting. Yeah, okay. And one of his assistants would probably work on that. free money to try to spend it. Yeah. yeah. As, it's like but, but you get a match. Yeah. It's like contributing to a 401k yeah. where you're getting an employer match. So 
a lot of it is, is it flexible and not every just dollar money or quality you spend? Back. Back. As long as you spend on certain things, but the definition has, according to Senator Lewis, the definition has expanded. When it first came out, we were like, yeah, please don't make this into money. But guess what? The people that did it are getting money and using it. Oh, wow. And the library building would have been, that's a historical building. We need to renovate historical buildings. The town's full of it. Yeah. We need to renovate parks. Yeah, recreation room, absolutely. Choir yeah. stuff. Yeah. So, at the minimum, it needs more exploration. I think the, the town is just missing it. It's, it's yeah. not sufficient. It has to be lower than library order, so it definitely needs like right. it's, it's, it's so as much it's work as normal. But do you want to hit them with that and then say, and we need a two and a half of that too? Yeah, I don't know. Right, that's a great question. Yeah. Um, you know, how many things can we really do at the same time? Yeah. 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 I think already we're going to get a pushback because of the, the two library overrides, and now mm -hmm. the new law permits you don't allow it. So it's going to be three and four years. Same thing, same issues. Um, I would say, to answer your question earlier, sorry, the library has kind of asked that we look at that okay. at, at two things actually. Okay. One is the half person, mm -hmm. not your person. Mm -hmm. um, and the other is for some reason in, in their budget, and I don't completely understand it, they haven't paid the state and or education and learning at the same time. Percentage um, will be has to go into new books, new materials each year. So the state yeah, mandates yeah. in the 15th. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So that should be budgeted. That's kind of the yeah, you have to do it. Um, and I believe that's not in their budget. Um, so as, as proposed, it was included. Yeah. And Bob chopped it 60 something oh. thousand dollars okay. back to the, the level that was requested of every department. Mm -hmm. And so they kind of asked us to take a look at that. So I think that we will lose our credit. something they, they certainly can, can determine. I mean, we can see what their budgets look like. I don't know that their defense budget's that much room to do that at this mm -hmm. point. So as far as our role, how much can we, how much can we ask as far as uh, how can we help these members and, and other options that they've considered? Um, using the legislature as an example, if they're saying, okay, we're in the next year budget, we need to bring in a new mm -hmm. lot of money, then, et cetera. Yeah, <laughs> 
It's coming, it's all the people in town it's going yeah, restaurants, all restaurants going right, down. You don't know. I mean, you're bringing maybe, maybe. It didn't, it didn't yeah. increase the school. Well, coming that, out. That's, to me, that's a very reasonable economic development argument. It makes sense. If you have people here in town, there's not much more you can do other than force them to pay for the, for the food and conditions if they want to do that. So I, 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 that one, I, I, don't, I think that one's pretty reasonable. No, but Let, let's kind of get ourselves focused. And they're saying there's a revenue argument behind it. I'm with you. I want to see the numbers. Well, let's just tell me it's going to bring in revenue.
So let, let me let me kind of bring us back on track here because I think we, we should move on and get us out of here. So um, so we talked about the next meeting. We talked about coming from the subcommittee. Is there anything else that we you think that's important? I don't think so. But other, the big thing is going to be kind of the uh, the voting. And what's going to happen? I would anticipate we'll have some people in the room who um, want to be interested in the outcome of it. But we're really good. We need to work the time for this. So, anything else that we should talk about before minutes? No. Nope? What's the minutes? based on what happened last year and replace it with... No, you don't have to take it out. Just say, um, after the word conservative, um, in right in our uh, state aid projection or estimate, and then based on what happened last year, that would be... Just add those words would be great. Okay, so let's back up one step. First, we need to put uh, the motion on the table. So anyone can move a move or a second? Okay. Right, ready? Seconding. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Remember that's H is unknown, so we should be concerned. 